Thank you, Rabbi Warshaw and the National Council of Young Israel for inviting me to share these four minutes of Torah. My name is Rabbi Tavir Brander, and I have the privilege of serving as the rabbi of the Young Israel West Hartford in Connecticut. What's in the name? Would a rose by any other name smell just as sweet? Throughout the Bible, names are used to convey meaning, messages, and insights into their bearers. Our Parsha and the Book of Names is no exception. Let's consider Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses. In Shani, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 10, we read, Ba'igdal hayeled v'tiviehu lebat taro. When the child grew up, she brought him to the daughter of Paro, Vayila lebein, who made him her son, Vatikra shemo Moshe, and she called him Moshe, Vatomer, explaining, Kimen amayim nishitihu, I drew him out of the water. A pretty straightforward name and etymology. Yet, who named Moshe? Bat Paro, Paro's daughter. Does it sound like she is someone who could understand, let alone devise and give such a beautifully crafted Hebrew name, Moshe? The commentaries are divided in trying to explain this. Some suggest that she sought advice from the Jewish slaves or may have even learned Hebrew from them. Others suggest that Moshe is just a Hebraicized version of an Egyptian name stemming from the same etymology. Even more extreme, some propose that actually Yocheved, Moshe's biological mother, named Moshe in anticipation of the miraculous salvation that she hoped he would merit. Most radically, though, is an opinion cited by the Nitziv, Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, the 19th century famed Rosh Yeshiva of the Velazhin Yeshiva. He proposes that really Moshe is a fully Egyptian name that has nothing to do with being pulled from the water. Rather, in the old Egyptian dialects, the word Misha, Moshe, means offspring or son. After all, the daughter of Paro adopts Moshe as her son and proudly calls him Moshe, son, or as I would like to imagine, Sonny. In fact, if you look at the verse in our Parsha carefully, it is clearly ambiguous. It depends how you break up the verse. To the Egyptian reader, it might read, Vayila Lebain, the daughter of Paro adopted him as a son, Vatikra Shemo Moshe, therefore she called him Moshe, son. And yet to the Hebrew reader, Vatikra Shemo Moshe, she called him Moshe, Vatomer, she explained, Kimin Hamayim Mishitihu, for I drew him, Mishitihu, from the water. So which is it? Is Moshe a name, a Hebrew name given by his Jewish mother or an Egyptian name given by his Egyptian mother? What's in the name? What does this ambiguity tell us about Moshe, about the leader and savior of the Jewish people? It tells us that we have a child who is not sure who he is. It foreshadows this young boy's future struggles. Am I a Jew? Am I an Egyptian? Who is my mother? Bat Paro, Yochavet? Just read as the Parsha unfolds. First, Moshe identifies with the Jews, channeling his Jewish identity and turning his back on his Egyptian royal family, only to be confronted by the very next day by rejection from the same Jews who he saved the day before because he was an Egyptian. He flees to Midian and again viewed as an outsider, identified as an Ish Mitzri, an Egyptian man. And lastly, he settles down and marries into a family of Midianite priests. So who is Moshe? Just imagine one day while Moshe is walking in the desert, God calls out to Moshe from the burning brush, Moses, I am the God of your ancestors. And I can imagine hearing Moshe respond, God of my ancestors? Which ancestors? My biological, my adopted, my in-laws, the Hebrews, the Egyptians, the Midianites? Ultimately, Moshe chooses and prioritizes to throw his lot in with the Jewish people, revives his Jewish identity. And perhaps this is the message behind the enigmatic story in our Parsha in the end. Yet if this is true, if Moshe is a persona struggling with the difficult and different identities that he carries, he's pushed and pulled, trying to construct a cohesive and coherent sense of self and identity. Why does the Almighty choose Moshe to save and lead the Jews? What a strange pick. Why choose someone so conflicted, someone with so many disparate parts, 
pulled in so many different directions, Jew, Egyptian, Midianite. Why not choose a simple Jew, someone with no questions, without any complexes? What's in the name? HaKadosh Baruch Hu chooses Moshe to tell us, to teach us that, yes, it's tough managing different and conflicting identities. It's hard to live with all the different pushes and pulls that our modern life pushes on us. It's human to struggle to piece together all the different parts, the disparate aspects that make up who we are. Jew, American, parent, child, grandparent, grandchild, sometimes all three of those at the same time. Parts of who we are, are we supportive friends, loving spouses, committed community members, dedicated professionals. And at the end of the day, of course, we need to make decisions as to who we are going to be and what are the priorities in our life going to be. But if we can manage to pull it all together, the good from here and the good from there, to synthesize it into one, if we can endeavor to live lives of complexity, of sophistication, of nuance, if we can caringly try to piece together the exhausting pieces of this puzzle, then that person is the person who will have the greatest impact on the Jewish people, on our community, and on the world. And that's why the Almighty ultimately chooses Moshe to lead the Jewish people. It's not easy, but if we can figure out how to do it, the potential is limitless. Shabbat Shalom from everyone here at the Young Israel West Hartford.